that my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me and the light around me turn to night. Darkness is not dark to you, O Lord. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Dear friends, here in the presence of Almighty God, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts, confess our sins so that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. The Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. He strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices. O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. A reading from Psalm 107, verses 1 through 32. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert places. They found no way to a city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deep gloom, bound fast in misery and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he humbled their spirits with hard labor, they stumbled, and there was none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them out of darkness and deep gloom, and broke their bonds asunder. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the wonders he does for his children. For he shatters the doors of bronze, and breaks in two the iron bars. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sin. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships and plied their trade in deep waters. 
Then they beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then were they glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people and praise him in the council of the elders. The word of the Lord. A reading from Luke. Then Jesus t- told them a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Here ends the reading. Good evening, I'm Deacon Lisa. This evening, Patty Irene has asked me to do a short reflection on our gospel for this evening prayer. It's known as the parable of the importune widow. At first, we find Jesus talking to his disciples. He wants them to understand how important prayer is. They seem not to understand, so much so, that he needs to tell them in a different way. So he tells them a parable. This is something that most rabbis, many rabbis, did in those times, and they still do today. After all, what is a homily, a sermon, or a reflection? It's basically a parable. And we all know that sometimes the sermon or the homily or even the reflection, can require some extra understanding or explanation. So in this parable, we have a widow. Most likely she was very poor and she had no representation. She had suffered an injustice. Maybe her landlord had kicked her out or her in-laws decided not to help her after her husband died. But as the law dictates, she had the right to go directly to a judge and get justice. This particular judge was a scoundrel. He could have cared less about this woman. He cared less about the law or about anything in particular. So he tries to evade her, to ignore her, but she is very tenacious. She is persistent. That's how we're supposed to be in our prayer. He finally relents because she has worn him down. With her constant and relentless requests for justice. At this point, we can look at this and we can wonder. I understand that this parable uh, represents that we're supposed to pray all the time. That the woman or the widow represents us and how we have to be persistent in prayer. So, how is God represented in this? Is he the unjust judge? No, of course not. This parable can also be known 
as an example of what could be called, if this is so, then how much more? Do you remember the parable of the lilies of the field that we talked about a few weeks back and how gloriously they were clothed by God? Or the birds and how God feeds them? Or he knows every hair on your head? And if he pays attention to the lilies and the birds and to the hairs on our heads, how much more does he care for us? Well, that's what's going on in this parable. Jesus is saying here that this most powerless widow can get her case heard if she, who is basically the floor on which the bottom rung of the ladder sits, can be heard by a judge, then how much more will God, who loves us so dearly, listen to our pleas? Though this is not perhaps what prayer really seems like, although we sometimes wonder if we're ever being heard, but God does listen. And in his time, he does respond to us. We're only asked to be persistent. We have to keep it up. You can't practice prayer in just a few brief moments once a week when life is getting rough. It has to be something you do daily, something you do all the time. I like to think that when I'm going for my walk, I'm praying, I'm being thankful, I'm thanking God for what I'm doing. When I'm doing the dishes, I'm thinking about my family and whether or not they need God to listen to them, watch out for them, to heal them. As I am cleaning house, I am asking God to watch over my friends. Prayer is like that. It's all the time. It's simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. So, in a sense, you could say that prayer is like the doorbell on heaven's door. You have to keep ringing that doorbell because if nobody answers, you just keep pushing the bell until somebody does finally come to the door. Thank you. Together we recite the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day. 
O God of ineffable mercy, you gave grace and fortitude to blessed Edmund the King to triumph over the enemy of his people by nobly dying for your name. Bestow on us, your servants, the shield of faith with which we can withstand the assaults of our enemy. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray for the needs of our community. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you for healing those who are sick, especially Ted, Dante, Catherine, Dolores, Francine, Sharon, Jidel, Hank, Gary, Josefina, Nigila, Virgilia, Nancy, Maria Luz, Wilfredo, Tom, and Fido, that their health may be renewed and their strength restored. Look with pity upon those who are grieving the loss, the loss of their loved ones, especially the Pama and Estes family, Clement and Lamparzik family, Jima, James, and Joshua Ordonia. May the hope of the resurrection give them courage to meet the days to come. Accept in your paradise the souls of your servants, Claudia Clement Lamparzek, John Estes, and Aquilino Ordonia. May they rest in peace and enjoy the eternal life that you promised to all your children. Look with favor upon your servants, the elderly, the widows, the widowers, orphans, those who live alone those who are struggling to make ends meet, those who lost their jobs during this pandemic, those who lost their homes and loved ones from the typhoon in the Philippines, those who are facing challenges and difficulties due to various reasons, and those who are missing, especially Michael Castro. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting amen jesus be the center of my life jesus be the center of my life from beginning to the end it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, and nothing else matters. Nothing in this world will do. And Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you, Jesus, you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus, be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center, it's all about you, yes it's all about you, from my heart to the heavens, 
Jesus be the center, it's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Jesus, 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 and nothing else matters, nothing in this world will do. Mm. Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around you, Jesus, you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the light of God surround you, the love of God enfold you, the power of God protect you. The presence of God watch over you, and may God hold you in the palm of His hands. Amen. Amen.